What the hell is that? It's a kitten. Not that. You know perfectly well what I mean. Kitten tower? See, she thinks she's cute. She thinks oh, she's cute mean, and shit. In my majestic Christmas hippo? What the Christ have you done? I got it at Target. More that, that's Dan, not an explanation! Dan bought it for me at Target. That's not an explanation! It has a little Santa hat and a festive scarf and it lights up. Again? And Dottie was just trying to chew its snout off a minute ago. Well, she's got good instincts. That's the devil! No! Dan, now you come in. I, my, Mike, producer Mike, bought Dan a present. Mike's an asshole. What did Mike do? You gotta squinch down so they can see you. What you is it? <laughs> what the hell have you done? It's 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 a Santa belly and a hairy Santa chest. Mike, what the fuck? <laughs> but more than that, why are you wearing it? <laughs> Cause I told him to. She asked me to. Hey, you're gonna flatten my hair. Here, I can wear my hat. You can wear it on your butt, Dottie. No. <laughs> Dottie's like, fuck that thing. I don't want it on my butt. Dottie's the only one who has any sense in that house. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Mike, for the for the lovely gift. We sounded at Kohl's and Dan absolutely refused to buy it, so Mike was precious enough to bestow it upon us. Dottie is the only only creature in that house with a, you kill that fucking hippo, <laughs> Dottie. Okay. okay. Dottie, I'm gonna try and dive on it from the tower. Dottie, you kill that son of a bitching thing. That is the devil. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? No, it's not. It's supposed to be a lawn ornament, but we've kept it in the house because I don't want to not see it all the time. And somebody might steal it. Yeah. Who the Christ would steal that? Anybody. Who wouldn't steal that? Same people. But, but it's a Christmas hippo. You're not strengthening your argument! It's festive. And cheerful. It's smiling. Hi, Peg. Peggy liked it. She kissed it. And then Dottie tried to gnaw its face off. Go Dottie! <laughs> <laughs> Dottie Dottie's more skeptical. Uh, Dottie is sane! Dottie is most definitely not sane. Well, I, Our cat is not. I trust. I'm trusting Dottie's judgment on this one. Uh, you, what are uh, you doing? How big is it? Probably like maybe two and a half feet. It weighs nothing. It's very lightweight. What are you doing? Are you you're going to run off and start up staging us again, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to tear down that fucking green screen. I will finally win that battle. He did. He knocked the whole damn thing over today. This big, loud crash. He goes, and you know how they always do when they knock some shit over? They do that panic run. Yeah. Straight down the stairs. And then 10 minutes later, he comes back up. and He's looking at it like, wow, what happened here? What happened in here, man? That looks crazy. Yeah. What, the, what have you been doing up here? I had nothing to do with this. Nope, not me. I was not a part of any of this sh Yeah, our girls routinely scare the bejesus out of themselves. <sighs> well, it's you time for the news. <laughs> you guys need to send Nash a Christmas hippo of his own. I'm kind of afraid he would set it on fire and film it. <laughs> There's no fear there. That's a certainty. Yeah. And I can't allow that to happen. To While me. singing a jaunty tune. I can't I can't afford to let that happen to a festive Christmas hippo that needs a good home. The only good home that thing needs is a sanitarium. I love it. You would. Anyway, it's time for the news. That's not the news. What the fuck? What is what is what the dick is going on here? Uh, every fucking week there's always something. All right. Each week, Catherine, Ready Dead Air audience, 
Go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And next week, of course, is going to be our Chris Quanzonica's Dismas special. Is that already? It's the last Monday before Christmas. So, God damn, yeah, I gotta start week. shopping. So, that's next week. But, oh, speaking of shopping. Uh-oh. So that's where we're starting this week. Uh, and it is, of course, Florida. Because, of course, this is Florida. Because, of course, it's Florida. Where would we be without Florida? We'd be nowhere without Florida. Florida, we salute you. Happy, contented, with considerably more faith in humanity. That's where we'd be without fucking Florida. <laughs> Uh, here we go. From Port St. Lucie, Florida. Man tries to sneak 58-inch TV out of Walmart during Shop with a Cop event. I feel like we've done this one before, haven't we? You would think, but this is a brand new report. Friday, December 9th. This happened again? 2016. Man who tried to do some Christmas shopping at a Walmart in Port St. Lucie is now in the slammer, and in part because some deputies were also doing some Christmas shopping for kids. Police say James Walsh tried to walk out of Walmart with a 58-inch television on Monday. Unfortunately, he didn't pay for it. Surveillance cameras followed the shoplifting suspect as he strolled around the store with the huge TV box in his shopping cart. He had his phone to his ear, waiting for his opportunity to get outside. Investigators say a store asset protection officer tried to stop Walsh before he walked out of the store. Police said Walsh ran back into the store and left through another exit. Unfortunately for him, deputies from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office were at the store with a shop with a cop event. Several ran after him. They had him in custody in no time. How exactly do you sneakily steal a 58-inch TV anyway? I, like, was this going to work even if it wasn't shop with a cop day? I No, listen, at the end of the story, Walsh admitted to stealing a TV at the same store the day before. Really? So yes, yes, it does work. How? I suspect it's something along the lines of if you walk around like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with no concern, few people will challenge you on this. But they put stickers on large items like that to denote that they've been paid for. Which means if they've not been paid for, somebody should stop you. Yeah, but if... Hey, what are you doing on? <laughs> If you're working at Walmart and the chewing sound stops, how how if you're working at Walmart, how much do you really want to challenge these motherfuckers? True. You're probably not paid enough to care. I mean, for Christ's sakes, think how much shit you get when you ask for a fucking receipt. Yeah. Someone's coming up with two cart grocery shirt uh, grocery sh uh, carts full of shopping and you say, uh. Could, could we see your receipt before you leave? They ask like you are the Spanish Inquisition. Oh, yeah. There's like a whole internet movement that hates receipt checkers. It's like a thing. What are you doing over there? It's like, how dare you, sir? What, what, you want to put a yellow star on me next? How oh, good God. Lord. Dottie found a crinkly ball. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. You impugn my dignity, sir. And it's weird because in some places it's fine. Like Costco, they've always done it, so nobody cares. Yeah. But places where they don't, they're not used to it, it's a fucking crime. So, yeah, I can see how this guy, just looking like, you know, I've done my shopping, I'm a perfectly content, upright citizen, could walk out with one. I guess. <laughs> it's just this time he did it just with... Just not on all the police are there day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you would think if he walked into the store and saw, like all the police, he would have been like, Maybe not the day to shoplift a 58 inch TV. Let's try this tomorrow. Right. And the look on his face is like, yeah, I deserve this. 
You got me. Yeah. Well, I tried. I mean, just... He kind of looks like the guy that plays the new Punisher if he got hit with the ugly stick a couple times. <laughs> oh, so... Moving along to our next story, uh, this is a thing that I knew was going to happen the minute I started seeing uh, roadside LCD signs. You've seen those, those the great billboard ads that are television, or that are, yes, are, 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 are that monitors. Yes, accidents waiting to happen. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen the minute those became a thing. On the West Side Highway in Manhattan, they actually have one that runs like commercials. And I'm just like, why would you put television on a fucking highway I know. in Manhattan? I mean, how are people supposed to hear them? Do you put on the closed captioning and shit? You're asking people to read while they drive? That's a good plan. No, but I, I knew that... The in design school, they teach you, if you're designing a billboard, you need to design it. People have about eight seconds mm -hmm. of attention to give a billboard. So you have to design it accordingly. Like, minimal information. Ah, uh, well, I knew this was going to happen the minute there were computer screens along the highway. And yes, it eventually, it's, it's again, we're back to if a thousand monkeys typed on a thousand typewriters for a thousand years. <sighs> Hackers stream, type, man tired of sitting in traffic, hacks into electronic billboard to stream porn. Dan... <laughs> when you're stuck in tra gridlock traffic, you may do any of the following things. Scroll through your Instagram feed, fire up a new podcast, check out, check yourself out in the rearview mirror, bang your head on the steering wheel, or flip off the guy in front of you. But one 24-year-old IT worker in Jakarta, Indonesia, recently cited he had a better idea for how to pass the time. Now, I'm going to take them to task a little bit on this term, hacking. He hacked into the nearest electronic billboard. Well, everything's hacking now. And streamed hardcore Japanese porn for frustrated commuters to communally watch in horror. Feeling That's kind of amazing. Wait, it's not so much. Feeling bored on his afternoon commute in the Indonesian capital, the man spotted the billboard's login details displayed on the Videotron. Someone's getting fired. That's not hacking. No. That's not fucking hacking. That's you put the, the login and the password to the screen on the screen. But eight years ago, Sarah Palin's email got hacked because someone figured out the answers to her security questions, which were all on her Wikipedia page. Get hacking... Hacking is now, I happen to sit down at your laptop in the internet cafe when you left it there. Yeah, that's not fucking, hacking takes work. Yeah. In any event, the ball's on this guy. Yeah, because fucking Indonesia, man. They do not they don't play around. around with porn. Like, you get caned for littering there. He could, a police arrested the hacker who could face up to 12 years in jail. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they still do the caning thing, but they don't fuck around in Indonesia. Still, the ball's on it. To be, you know what, I would have put, I would not have put porn up there. Because it's already, it already annoys me enough. And you've seen this. You've all seen this. Don't act it's, like you don't. It's Singapore, Malaysia, I think <laughs> Indonesia too. It, this, it already annoys me enough when I'm driving down the highway. And you all know this. The people who have the TVs in the backseat of their car, ostensibly for the kids. And they put fucking porn on it. And it's, what, you've never seen that? No. I've seen that several times. I've seen big ass SUVs. I can those... never make out what's playing on the TVs in the car in front of me. It just looks like a big blue box to me. No, I've been stopped at a stoplight. I've looked up and I'm like, oh, those are tits. Okay. And that's that's a blowjob going on. All right. That's wow. that's happening right now. No, I cannot say I've ever encountered that. 
And I can all I can only expect, you know, the people with the kids, like I'm not talking like twelve and thirteen year olds. They've seen all the fucking in the world. I'm talking like a four year old that looks up and then there's, you know, a blowjob. Why would you put porn on the, your in car TV? That's an excellent goddamn question, Tara. Around. That's an excellent goddamn question, Tara. I wish I knew the answer to I don't it. Understand what the animus is there. Well, why would you put it on a fucking roadside billboard screen? Because that's hilarious. <laughs> there is a difference. I mean, he's going to go to jail for a decade, and that probably not worth it, but... Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm staunchly against the car TV anyway. <laughs> like, if your kid can't drive two hours without having to watch Finding Dory, you failed as a parent. Monkey Shines in the channel said, we've all had those days. Traffic just blows. <laughs> it's true. <sighs> all right. Next up. You, oh, you motherfucker. Remember last week we had the lady who pulled the emergency door on the plane? Yeah. And hopped out on the goddamn tarmac? Yeah. And we explained very carefully that you have delayed exit for everyone else on the plane, and they're going to be angry, and the cops are not going to be happy. No one is going to be happy. Hi, doodlebug. No, you've ruined everybody's day. Well, guess what? They, I, I guess, you know, I can Somebody say... Somebody got very angry with us saying, well, maybe she had an anxiety or panic disorder. I have an anxiety disorder, okay? I've never fucking jumped out of a plane early. Like, you have to conduct yourself in society. I'm sorry. Uh, apparently, they took our... Our, our uh, you know, our, our statement on this to heart, and they did not do it... The person who did this did not do it on a plane. They did it on a train. Oh, that's not safe. Man opens emergency door on New Jersey train to save Exit. to save his phone. Oh no. A New York City man allegedly pulled the emergency door release on a New Jersey transit uh, train after his cell phone fell between two cars. At approximately 8:20 a.m. Monday morning, Eric Jones of Harlem, New York City, pulled the, pulled the emergency door release as his train was near Sukakis Junction. Crew member then stopped the New Jersey Coastline train, and Jones reportedly, quote, opened the doors and jumped onto the tracks. Your phone is not worth it. I know phones are expensive. Dying is worse. You can never check Tinder again if you're dead. Spokesperson for New Jersey Transit said this caused delays up to 15 minutes on the Northeast Corridor, New Jersey Coast, Raritan Valley, and Midtown Direct Lines going in and out of New York City. And you might be saying, well, 15 minutes is not a big deal. Yeah, tell that to your boss. I was going to say, that's actually pretty damn impressive, because if this was the Metro North, it would be a day and a half shutdown. Because the Metro North is bullshit. But still, so... when you come in 15 minutes late, Yes, yeah, some asshole lost his cell phone. So the, but at least you can show them the article and prove that you weren't lying. Yeah, like the day after. Yeah. You know, after you're fired. You're not going to get fired for being 15 minutes late for work. I work fucking retail and I've been 15 minutes late for work. Well, that's right. You're not in a right to work state. Never mind. <laughs> right to work states are a little bit different. All right, fair. If you blink funny, they can fire you. Um, and this is the line of the story that kills me. They actually asked the spokesperson for New Jersey Transit this question. Here is his response. He was not sure whether Jones was able to retrieve his phone. I, I mean, you got to ask that question. Like, <laughs> did it at least work? Did he get his phone back? Did fucking asshole at least get his phone. Did he get his phone back? And because it's Jersey, I fully expect the transit guy to be like, yeah, and then we stomped on it right in front of him. Because fuck you. I mean, oh, good God. Yeah, don't, like, I know. It, yeah. 
I know that phone's expensive. I know it has your whole life on it. But you know what else has your whole life on it? Your body. Yes. You need that. You need it for living. Train tracks are without it. Train tracks are a place for only one singular thing, and that's a train. We have not yet reached the Westworld thing where we can just upload your consciousness into a 3D printed version of you. Like, no. you're gonna die. Are you, it's simple question to ask. If you're on the train tracks, are you a train? If you are not in fact a train, get the fuck off the train tracks! <laughs> what if you think you're a train? Now I just have this picture of like 50 idiots walking down the road, walking down the Choo -choo! train track. <sighs> that's, gonna be the, that's gonna be the reboot of Human Centipede. <laughs> Human commuter rail. <laughs> Oh, this next one, you know what? Sometimes these stories, you just got to give them fucking credit. Doodlebug, you're giving the internet the butt again. Turn around. Turn around. I'm, I'm actually impressed with these, with these guys. There we go. Because, well, God bless them, it worked. Thieves pose as mannequins before stealing 10,000 euros worth of clothes. Or is that pounds? That's the pound sign, isn't it? Uh, that's pounds. That's pounds. 10,000 so pounds. England. Yeah, because England's the only place still on the pound, I think. Yeah. <laughs> A gang of thieves, thieves managed to pull off quite the crime. They got away with 10,000 pounds worth of designer clothes from the Beals department store in Worthing after posing as mannequins along re alongside real dummies. That's they amazing! They struck as soon as staff and customers left for the day, leaving them plenty of time to leisurely browse the aisles. Sussex police were left baffled as to how the gang managed to get into the store without setting off any alarms. The alarms only triggered as they escaped with their haul via the fire escape. An assistant at the tour described the heist as reminiscent of scenes from Home Alone 2, where bad guys Harry and Marv plot to rob a toy store in a similar fashion. Is this where the fucking mannequin, mannequin challenge comes from? This Do you not. understand the mannequin challenge? We're too old, I think. Yeah. I, I think don't get it. You're supposed to take video of everybody standing still. Yeah. I guess they win. They probably dressed in clothes identical to those worn by the mannequins and stood there, not moving a muscle till the shop shut down and everyone went home. That's really hard. Like, not blinking or anything? You know at least one of them had to pee. That is... That's fucking impressive. Like, they kind of deserve those clothes. Yeah, exactly! I mean, uh, I'm sitting here going, well, you did steal... A whole lot of dollars worth of merchandise. You kind of earned them. Yeah, y'all put in work, man. Because that's some nefarious shit. Because Kanye West did this with models over the summer. He had just a field. He did, it, he did his big runway show on a rooftop. And he had the actual runway. But then beyond the runway, he had just like 60 models just that were supposed to stand completely still the whole time. But it was like 90 degrees out that day and like three of the models passed out from heat exhaustion. Well, that's because Kanye West is, is a human sphincter. But... He is... Kanye West is the sphincter of humanity because what it, he, everything that comes out of his mouth is just complete bullshit. Am I wrong? I I am loath. Am to I wrong? Like a, I am loath to ridicule a person who just suffered a legit mental breakdown. <laughs> but like he had a very, very public psychological breakdown. So yeah, I'm not too happy. I'm not really that. looking to go after like and Kim. Like I feel bad for Kim at this point because she like got <sighs> robbed in Paris and just wants the fuck out of fame. But she's Kim Kardashian. Like I, I feel like I never thought I'd say this, but I feel a little bad for them right now. They're having hard times. They're having hard times with billions of dollars, but they're having hard times. Yeah. Where were we? 
these guys, these time. guys, <laughs> these guys fucking did work. They did. But do you read fashion because there's a type of fashion show where they don't do a runway show. I forget what it's called. But instead, they have all the models in a room posed and they have to stand completely still for like 90 minutes while people walk around to look at the clothes they're wearing. Instead of using mannequins, they use live models to make them act like mannequins. And they tell you, like, it's really fucking hard. Yeah, well, to just stay perfectly still for that long. Except in that case, they don't get to leave with the clothes. Right. They don't even get to keep the clothes. They just get to leave with like exhaustion. These guys got to leave. You got to you got to hand it to the fuckers. I mean, yeah, they didn't hurt nobody. Sure, no. they stole a bunch of money. Sure, they stole a bunch of stuff, but I'm sure they're insured. I can't condone this because it's still a robbery. It is still technically wrong. And it is the reason prices go up. But I could admire their hustle. But I can't be mad at them right now. I mean, I can. Th this is some shit. You remember that that uh, movie, um, Catch Me If You Can? Yeah. Tom Hanks, DiCaprio. And they ended up hiring that guy. Yeah. When they catch these people, like, hire needs, them. This needs to be your new LP team. I know. Seriously. Hire th these guys. They were they were on the fucking ball here. That's some Ocean's Eleven shit right there. I know. Yeah, that would be a happy ending. They get clothes back, they get hired, everybody's happy. That's what they need to do. Good hustle. And then make a movie. Then make a movie. Fuck it. You know what? If I was a if I was a fucking agent, I would be at that store right now. Make a movie with like all the current stars on the CW. I would be signing pay I would be signing people's stories. I would go to the police and be like, when you catch these guys, you give them my number. We gonna make a movie. Yeah, it'll pay their legal fees. Uh, speaking of making Don't movies, uh, speaking of making movies, Jesus fucking Christ. We go from one where I can actually kind of admire the bastards, even though they still are bastards, to this one. And as someone who makes videos online, I hate when this sort of shit happens. I take very, very careful precautions with the crazy, silly shit I do. Stuff I've done on my private property, I've tended to make sure was on my private property. Yeah. And it does not spill out elsewhere. And if I've done stuff on location, I still try to respect all the rules and not get in anybody's faces and not like videotape somebody who doesn't want to be taped and not. Well, not this, for example. Brothers busted for Walmart dirt bike prank and the, i love the, the in the story headline prank is in quotation two kentucky brothers were arrested yesterday in connection with a youtube prank showing one of the siblings speeding through a walmart on a dirt bike justin bell and howard bell 27 and 44 old enough to know better are each facing a felony wanton endangerment charge for the stunt Sunday morning at the Walmart in Alexandria, a city 15 miles south of Cincinnati. Video shows Justin Bell, who is wearing white underpants, a red cape, and boots, zipping through the store's aisles and past shoppers around 10.15 a.m. Bell was wearing a helmet cam while his brother also filmed the two-minute race. Remarkably... Walmart employees did not call police to report that someone had driven through the store on a gas-powered vehicle. They fucking work at Walmart. They they are dead inside. They don't care. They are done. <laughs> they don't care. As long as it doesn't interfere with their break. Yep. Or their time leaving the store. Or they don't have to clean up after it. They don't. They are they 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 are not putting in any more work than they have to. They don't give a shit. Not a single fuck was given that day. Instead, cops learned of the incident after being told about a YouTube video showing where a male subject drove a small motorcycle at a high rate of speed through the Alexandria Walmart store. So, what's the conception phase for this? Like, <sighs> what? How do you decide to ride through the Walmart? On a motorbike in your underwear and film it with your brother who's old enough to be your father. Well, listen to some of these others. Their page, which has nearly 6,000 subscribers, features dozens of 
prank videos, they keep using prank in quotations, which they're right, with titles like, quote, tongue in a mousetrap, tasing testicles, getting electrocuted. In one clip, Justin Bell, who is alternately referred to as dummy or dum-dum, urinates on an electric bug zapper, causing his genitals to be shocked. So they really want to be jackass. But really, they're just jackasses. They're jackass about 15 years too late. Right. Also, if Ren and Stimpy taught us nothing else, don't whiz, whiz on, on the, the electric, electric fence. fence. They're really far apart in age. I know. I would also like to point out, had they not put this video online, right. they would not now currently be in jail. Well, they would not be in jail on $50,000 bond. Because not a single person in that Walmart gave a fuck. Yeah, you're not... You're not but you a got away with it. It was stupid and idiotic, but you got away with it. They're up for a felony now. Is that Why is that a felony? Wants an endangerment. Oh. When you're driving a gas-powered vehicle very, very fast in confined space with... People shop. If you look real closely at that picture, the person they've just ran by is a little old lady with white hair. Yeah, true. She's not real fast with the reflexes. But what did you? What was the planning phase for this? Like, dude, this is gonna be awesome. We're gonna we're gonna get a little motorbike, and I'm gonna wear my underwear, and I'm gonna ride through the Walmart. Cool. Yeah, that's that's what. That's cutting edge. That's that is the pinnacle of what online video was designed for. That's you are true trailblazers, Bell Brothers. Yeah. Good luck with that trial. You fuckers. I, I hate when they do this because it makes shit so much harder for the rest of us who try to at least respect the fact other people exist. I mean, when you rode through the Walmart on a motorbike in your underwear, you got release forms from everybody in that store. You were very diligent about that. I remember it. You could not pay me. And, and you only got it taken off YouTube because you used copyrighted music. That, that's saying a lot. All the silly shit I've done over the years. You could not pay me to do that. You really couldn't. And I have been paid to do some silly shit. You could not pay me to do that. <sighs> Speaking of, this this was my... You said, what was the planning phase? I have the exact same question about this. And guess what? We got video! Vidya! Vidya, yes. I I don't even... I don't even. I don't... I, I so don't even. I moved Peggy's little bed that sits in the window... <laughs> Where she likes to sit to put the hippo up, and now she's pouting. She flipped it over on the floor, and now she's pouting. <laughs> They're going to hate that hippo, and when they finally destroy it, I salute them. Well, usually it sits up on a bookcase where it's too high for them to get to. I moved it so it would be in the shot, and they have not been able to get to it so far, so it had to be inspected and pawed at and gnawed upon. <laughs> well, we started in Florida. We're ending in Florida circle let's have a look here this happened in south florida here's the in-store video let's get to it this is a man with a bucket on his head wearing a trash bag that's the video you're seeing right now this is the uh close closed circuit television is that the guy from axel rose's old band Miami, Florida, the man put a bucket on his head so his face couldn't be seen by the cameras. He also used what appeared to be a garbage bag to shield him as he gathered pricey pigeons and tools from El Vello Lazaro Botanica in the Flagami neighborhood of Miami. The owner of the store is hoping the video of the robber's antics, which included him falling off the ladder while leaving... Oh, oh shit, you motherfucker. I just, no, 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 I just got to the part in the video. Oh, there he falls the fuck down. I just got the part in the video where he dropped a cage full <gasps> of live birds no! 
over the fence and it lands on the floor on the ground. Here's the thing, if you want pigeons, just come to New York. They will be happy for you to take them. You mother like fucker. You don't need to steal them from a business. We have them in abundance. Just walk around Manhattan, people will give you a fucking medal. You steal some pigeons. The robber hopped a fence, made his way into the locked store. He took about 40 racing pigeons valued anywhere from $100 to $1,000. Racing pigeons? I don't know what it... You race pigeons? Apparently. I did not know that. But this, this motherfucker... Also, what the hell? Where, what, is there a fence for pigeons? Is there someone on speed dial? I know, you what could... are you doing with them? Are... Maybe he was trying to rescue them from the tough world of pigeon racing. I need you to move some birds for me, man. Maybe what... he wanted to set them free? What is that? Coke? Smack? Heroin? No, no, birds. Actual fucking birds. I need pigeons. to move some birds. <laughs> is there, yeah, is there like a pigeon black market? Fuck, fuck this guy. And but... what's... So I didn't know there was pigeon racing. And he planned this. Look, just walking around with a damn bucket on his head. Last time we had someone who did that, it was like a fish bucket. And they really regretted it. The, what? Th this motherfucker. This incredible motherfucker. Did he say racing pigeons or racist pigeons? He said racing pigeons. Racing. I, I don't think you can test pigeons for their <laughs> racial The ones that really fucking hate seagulls, man. Yeah, I, I don't think pigeons have a KKK. I could be mistaken America on this. is a pigeon nation. We don't want none of that seagull crap around here. <laughs> I mean, you motherfucker. And what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing with your life? Yeah. You got a bucket on your head. You're wearing a garbage bag. You're stealing pigeons. What? It, what the fuck happened to you? Do you think at any point during this whole debacle he stops and goes, "Maybe I should have stayed in community college." <laughs> Maybe this... Maybe I should rethink my life. You know, air conditioning repair is not looking so bad right now. <laughs> you might ask yourself, well, how did, did I, I get, get here? here? These are not my beautiful pigeons. This is not my beautiful bucket. I know. How is he... Who is going to sit there and spend $40,000 on hot pigeons? Who's okay. your hookup? Apparently somebody... Apparently we're missing out. Is there is there a huge black market pigeon trade going on? Maybe. I'm intrigued. I'm not. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I find this more interesting than the old people who put color coded loofahs on their golf courts to denote their kink <laughs> down in Florida. Like this is more interesting Florida thing than that to me, and that's saying something. I think the first thing we learned this week is if you find yourself with a bucket on your head, wearing a trash bag and stealing pigeons, it's time for a rethink. Yeah. Because maybe this, maybe call that life coach. This is not a viable path forward for your life. This this is not a career. This is <laughs> so I mean, how, how, how many pigeon robberies you got left in you, son? We've learned that just because someone will watch it on YouTube doesn't mean you should do it. Yeah, because fucking internet people will watch anything. Watching this right now. Exactly. We've learned if thieves are very, very clever, when you catch them, you should probably hire them to do security because they're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. We've learned that no matter how nice your goddamn iPhone 7 is, let that shit go if it falls on the train tracks. Just let, let it go. Let it go, man. It's gone. You it's... can get a new iPhone. You can't get a new spleen. You only got one of those. Well, you can, but... They ain't, they ain't making fake ones yet. Yeah, you're not getting... Well, you're right. You can't get a new one. You can get right. a used one. 
do they do spleen transplants? I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, no, I, you just live the rest of your life on antibiotics, praying you don't get an infection that kills you. Yeah. Like your spleen goes, life gets very inconvenient. Like you're not going to die immediately, but life gets very inconvenient for you. You become a bubble kid. We've learned that you probably shouldn't put the login and password <laughs> in plain view of the entire goddamn highway. Next time in traffic, I'm going to look for that. The login and password on the screen. So, so what? You're going to just put hentai up on the, on the fucking New Jersey turnpike? Hippos. Fantasia. <laughs> well, you see, that would be worse than porn because then Disney would come for you. Season three, lost. Just torture everybody. Disney would still come for you. Don't don't piss off the mouse. They're worse than they're worse than anybody. And finally, scientists have three D printed a spleen. That would be really interesting. That would be good news. And finally, we've learned. Maybe do your crime the day after the police go away, or the hour after. Just wait for the event to be over. Wait for the no police. Yeah, just wait for all the popo to go go. Really? I got a hippo. It's a Christmas hippo. 